just in case you missed today, we took data and we formed a position versus time graph with that data. You notice the graph with the red line that's there for you, position and time is all set up for you. We then took that information, formed a velocity versus time graph, and once we completed the velocity versus time graph, we then moved over to the motion map, which you see in the bottom left part of your screen. So the major question here is how do we get information from our position versus time graph to our velocity time graph? Right. The first question I have for you, what does the slope of a the slope of position versus time graph, what does that slope represent? What does the slope of a position versus time graph represent? It's your velocity. Okay, so the slope is representing your velocity. So then we need to go through the process of calculating the slopes on position versus time graph. You notice we have a couple of different slopes that we're going to, to consider, so we need to find the slope of each one. Using your slope formula, and I'm not going to review that with you right now, you have this first is 2 meters every second. Then you see this horizontal part that's right here. Whenever it's horizontal, notice the position does not change. Okay, the y value is not changing when the line is horizontal. So if the position is not moving, if the position is not changing, it means what? It means that your velocity is going to be zero. So and whenever we have this horizontal line on a position versus time graph, our velocity is going to be zero. All right. Then we have the next segment that almost looks like it's skyrocketing up. And here we calculate the slope to be 3 meters every second. Again, we have this horizontal section on the position versus time graph. Again, the position is not changing. So since the position is not changing, we do not have a displacement. And since we do not have a displacement, we do not have a velocity. So velocity here will also be 0 meters every second. Then we have our, our final slope. And notice what's different about this slope. It seems to be a negative slope. And so that indicates to us that we're going to have a negative direction. That's right. So we're going to have a negative direction because we have a negative slope. So when we put it into our slope formula, we actually get a value of 5 meters a second. But remember, I said it's a negative slope, so we need to make sure we include our negative sign there. So negative 5 meters every second. Now that we calculated our slopes, okay, then we're coming over to our velocity versus time graph. Our first section of time, notice we have between 0 and 2 seconds. This is our first section of time there. What is our slope during that period of time? Exactly, 2 meters a second. So we come to our velocity versus time graph. And guess what? For 2 seconds, this object is traveling 2 meters every second for 2 seconds. So we just draw a horizontal line because, hey, velocity is staying the same. The slope is staying constant for those two seconds at two meters every second. Then we come to our, back to our first horizontal section, and that happens between two seconds and three seconds. So there's that. So that's what we're looking at. We come back to our velocity versus time graph, and since our velocity or our slope was 0 meters every second, that indicates, hey, my velocity is also going to be 0 meters every second for that one second. All right? So we just draw the horizontal line between 2 and 3 seconds there. Then we have our next section of time that we have between 3 seconds and 5 seconds. So starting at 3 seconds, uh, we're going to have a velocity of 3 meters a second, 
and for two seconds that velocity does not change. So again, on a velocity versus time graph, we'll have the horizontal line because the slope of that section is not changing. Once we finish that, we notice we're at the very top of the graph now, and we have a velocity of zero meters a second, because on a position versus time graph, whenever we have a horizontal line, we do not have a velocity. So in this case, the velocity will be zero for those two seconds, and at seconds five, right there, seconds five and six are going to have zero velocity. Right? Now, we come to our, our last slope. We have a velocity of negative five meters a second, so we come over to our velocity versus time graph. Right under there, we have five meters, negative five meters every second, and that will be the graph, that will be the line for that at negative five meters a second for two seconds, because that's how long it, the slope was there. Okay. So we took information from our position time graph, moved it over, and converted it to velocity versus time. All, right. All it basically is is, again, since the slope on position versus time graph represents our velocity, all we're doing is just moving those slopes over to the values of velocity for those period of time. Once we did that, we then looked at motion maps. And again, the motion map for each point is going to represent one second. So we're going to go through our velocity versus time graph second by second to see what's going on. Okay. The first second over here from zero to one second, we notice hey, we have a velocity of two meters every second. So not that you have to do this, but I think it really helps is actually setting up a scale. So you have zero meters. I'm going to do it in, in scales of, of two meters every mark. That works well. And 10 meters there. So for the first section of time, the velocity was two meters every second. That lasted for two seconds. So since it lasted for two seconds and every point is representing one second, that means we're going to need to have two arrows, okay, two arrows. Um, so where do we begin? Well, we know that the velocity is a positive two, so it's going to be moving in the positive direction. So we can start at the very beginning and work our way to the right. So dot, arrow, hey look, in one second, it actually moved two meters. In the second second, it moved two meters. Okay. So then if we look at it, it's like, hey, two meters every second for two seconds, what would be our displacement? Two times two is four. Exactly. So we have a positive four meters for the first displacement. Then we come to this section of time, seconds between two and three. Okay. And we said, hey, it was actually stopped at that point. It was stopped where we had the horizontal line. So in order to show that the object is not moving, all we have to do is just put a dot. Just put a dot there, and that will be just fine. That dot is representing its position. Again, since this is position up top, and each dot is representing each second, we have position one, position two, and position three, and so on. I'm not going to continue to number those, so I'll just erase those for now so it doesn't mess you up. And draw my lines back. Okay, so that's where we're at. We're at here. We put our dot because it was stopped. Then we pick it back up with our slope being three meters every second. And here's where we need to pay attention to the length of our lines. Because we have a higher velocity in this point, we actually need to make the line longer. Okay? Because if you remember when we're initially starting to talk about vectors, we have magnitude and direction. Okay? So our direction is still in the, in the positive sense, and our magnitude is larger. So we need to indicate that with the longer arrow. So what I'm going to do then Instead of continuing on horizontally, I'm just going to drop it just a little bit, just below it. 
to show that we actually stopped for a second, and then we picked it up another second, and we're continuing back on our way. And this velocity of three meters every second lasted for two seconds as well. So I'm going to need two arrows to indicate that. Okay. So now we have basically we're up to our five second mark in time. This is where we are. So we find ourselves at five seconds. We work our way up to the graph and it's like, hey, we're back to the top. We're back to where it has stopped. So for one second, it has stopped. Okay. So now we're at six seconds. Uh, where it stopped, then we mark second seven. Okay, and at second seven, that's where the negative five meters every second begins. So, and that's going to last for two seconds. So, a negative five. So, we need an even longer arrow this time, and that happens for for two seconds. So, we have two arrows, and just by looking at this motion map. Just by looking at this motion map, what is our displacement? What is the total displacement of this situation? Zero, exactly. And we know that because our final position and our initial position are the same. So we have zero displacement. Hope this helps. See you later.